I'm going to turn it over to Jennifer Owen to discuss the critical nature of economic development and why it matters. Great. Thank you so much, Joanne. And I wish you could be here with us today. And really thank you to um, Representative Griffin and the entire committee for giving us a chance to share. Um, as Joanne mentioned, economic development is a team sport. And so it really takes a, a strong state. It takes a strong legislature, local communities. It takes our economic development and education leaders. Um, working together um, to be unified and seamless um, in regards to our competitiveness um, for Michigan against other states and countries that would really love to attract our businesses away from the Great Lakes state. So I wanna thank you for being an extended member of our economic development team. And it's so important that we continue to grow and strengthen that relationship. Um, this time with the significant federal resources coming due to COVID is really a rare accelerant um, for economic development. And it's up to us to work together towards a bright future for Michigan. And I'm a little biased, but I would say there's no better investment to help create a vibrant future than a successful competitive economic development organization and strategy. And I have to say economic development is one of those things I had a board member say, I don't know what economic development is, but I like it. And the reason is, is that economic development is very different and the strategies are very different depending on the community, what those needs are, um, you know, what the strategies are and what the priorities are. And, you know, Michigan is really blessed with a mix of urban, rural, suburban communities. I joke that when you drive from one side of Michigan to the other, sometimes it's like going from a different country. We are so different and that is great, um, but there is no one size fits all approach to growing Michigan's economy. And so that's why we as economic developers really look at the strategies, the strengths of our communities, the priorities, and then deploy those locally to move those local communities forward. But I can say that the one thing all of us members of economic development leaders from Michigan, which each of us represent a vast majority of the state, we can agree on one common priority, which is maintaining and growing the region's base of primary or GDP producing employers. And so these are really a unique set of businesses that we laser focus on that export goods and services out of the region and return wealth back to the region. They create the foundation for a community's economy. And sometimes incentivizing, incentivizing these businesses is absolutely necessary. Every small business in, in our community are in great part dependent on those wealth generating producing primary employers. Our community's largest primary employer is Gentex Corporation, headquartered in Zealand. And our region is really elegant in Ottawa County. So for those of you who have been to Holland for tulip time, that's kind of the center. The tulips are great right now. Um, and Gentex produces advanced technology found in your rear view mirrors and your backup cameras. So when you're backing up and your camera comes on, you know, that's Gentex. Also, they do retina displays. So you can now in the future look at your car and turn your vehicle on with merely just a look. Um, they employ more than 5,000 people in our region, yet they don't have a single customer in West Michigan. And in fact, the vast majority of their customers are not located in the US. So they've made the choice to grow and invest in our region. And that's really the choice because of our vibrant community, our talent workforce, our strong local supply chain. That's why they continue to invest and grow in our community but that doesn't come by accident. And retaining businesses like Gentex and encouraging their growth really takes a concentrated and focused effort from not only our team, but our partners at the state, our local units of government to ensure that our community is still first choice. And the reason we laser focus on companies that export goods and services out of the region. So for every one manufacturing job created at an employer like Gentex, up to four new additional jobs are created as a result. And these are jobs that, um, for us at local suppliers like JMAX Transportation. And they're a logistics company that transports the Gentex products out of the region or Triple Root Brewery that fills up with Gentex employees when a shift is done. At the heart of what we as economic developers do is remove barriers to growth. So how do we do that? And now it's a secret sauce, but I'll tell you the secret is there's no one size fits all approach or solution for a company or for a community. And so each employer's needs are specific and unique. And so we as economic developers spend a lot of time one-on-one -on -one 
listening to our primary under employers to understand their pain points. We build relationships and work to solve those challenges and understand the tools of the state, local, nonprofit, and other resource organizations so those companies can move forward. And if necessary, we develop new tools and programs when a solution doesn't currently exist. So an, an example of that is in 2019, Gentex and our other primary employers voiced that one of their number one concerns was a local interchange. They couldn't get their products out and their employees were having a hard time getting to work in time because of the congestion. So our team rolled up our sleeves and went to work with our local legislative leaders, local units of government, MDOT, MEDC, and other employers to find a way to fund this nearly $4 million state road enhancement program that is now running like clockwork. So each company's need is different. We work as an extended member of their team. So think of us in a way like the easy button. If you remember the Staples commercial, that easy button you could hit, that really helps solve those employers' challenges and provide solutions so they can continue to grow. What hasn't been so easy for our team now, and I think really for the entire state of Michigan, is to solve that number one barrier to grow, which is access to skilled talent. It's so great learning from my regional partners it's interesting, some of our challenges like daycare centers or affordable housing are very, very same throughout the state, but then some of our challenges are different. Um, the county that we represent, Allegan and Ottawa, they're one of the fastest growing counties in the state of Michigan, yet our migration rate is no match for the 80,000 people that moved to Georgia in just the second half of last year, or the one person every 42 minutes that moved to Denver in 2019. The fact of the matter is we are in a war for talent and right now our state is not winning. As a local entity, we've done our best to put strategies in place that have had impact, yet there's so much more that needs to be done to attract and retain talent to all of our regions. Um, our team, along with The Right Place, is a member of the board of directors of an organization called Hello West Michigan. And this organization, completely uh, privately funded, works directly with talent who want to live and work here in our West Michigan region. And so they put in place several programs such as in Intern Connect, which is a half day professional development conference designed to teach interns about our lifestyle. And internships are some of the best way to keep kids in this area, to give them exposure to professional development opportunities um, so connecting those interns together, we think really creates a stream for future workforce. They've also implemented a program, Rethink West Michigan, which is a casual um, event on the night before Thanksgiving, otherwise known as the biggest bar night of the year, which allows um, employers to uh, network and share um, opportunities with those who came back to the area for Thanksgiving to really expose them to careers. Um, and then there's a lot of outbound marketing that happens with Hello West Michigan as well. Um, all the programs there really have one thing in common. They're targeted at either young professionals or um, those who have ties to Michigan. We really feel the best tie to um, solve our talent challenge is to retain who we have and bring those back who we've lost or have some connection to the state, either through a college experience or some other experience here in the state. Um, and we've also worked side by side as, as Joanne and Jim have with high schools and our intermediate school districts to educate students on in-demand careers. Our region has about 30% um, of their jobs tied to manufacturing. And so a lot of our work is really um, tied to debunking the um, misconceptions about manufacturing being dirty or not technologically advantaged, really showing what it looks like in today's manufacturing environment. We put together a series of education videos that are shown in early as eighth grade, um, interactive in, during COVID, interactive Zoom calls with manufacturers to see what it looks inside their businesses. Um, we've worked with our West Michigan Works to create a program called My Career Crest, which brings thousands of high school students in a trade show like environment um, to really take a look inside careers. Um, right now, that's being held virtually, I think, next week. Um, and then our Career Line Tech Center, which is through our ISD, also, also offers career camps um, through fifth through 10th grade to give kids exposure to what they can do for careers. 
Um, so what we have found overall as we look at employment opportunities of which we are very much challenged to fill positions is the vast majority of positions require education beyond a high school degree. Now I'm not saying everyone needs to go to a four year college, but in order to continue to train and prepare kids for jobs of the future, we really have to reduce barriers to higher education. So specifically right now, we're looking at cost and accessibility of higher education in our region. We are one of the largest populated counties that does not have an in-district community college millage, which means our kids pay double what other regions do for community college training. So having accessibility um, and affordability of higher education programs in those in-demand careers is very important to make sure our kids are employable. So we really must do everything we can to attract and retain talent, but I would say talent solutions are very much local solutions as well. Um, there's gonna be no one silver bullet or state program that can solve this issue. Um, but one of the things that we think you can do to help is increase investment in talent attraction um, and marketing. So looking at maybe extending the Pure Michigan brand beyond tourism to include talent and business attraction Another opportunity is to provide additional funding to scale those local programs like Jim and Joanne and I will talk about that have already had impact and been tested. Resources are always challenging for each one of these programs to move forward. Um, so consider that really people are drawn to a place for opportunity and each needs of the region will be different. And also consider we're not Denver, we're not Georgia, we don't want to be, we're uniquely pure Michigan but working together, we really can compete and win for talent. Michigan Career Quest next week. I believe that was you, Jennifer, that spoke of it. Correct. Correct. And so my understanding, it's virtual. And this year it will be virtual, but um, every year, I think it's been nearly eight years, it's the DeVos Hall Trade Center. So kids all come in and they're bussed in back and forth by the intermediate school districts or by the um, educational institutes they sign up for. Um, different periods of time to come and just basically walk around a trade show with upwards of 100 employers who have demonstrations of the work that they're doing to give them a look inside. So it's Grand Rapids yeah, based. And, yeah. and I believe Southwest Michigan um, has also taken that concept and piloted it last year as well. I would like to see from your viewpoint what that what that's telling you as economic developers and how we can best position Michigan um, policy wise to um, manage the COVID recovery process moving forward? Uh, my feedback on it, especially in the talent space, is focus on both and. Focus on upskilling the workforce of our existing labor pool and attracting talent in. If you look at demographics, our birth rates are nowhere near as high as they used to be. We have a way older population. Um, if you look at nationally, I, I don't know side by side with the Midwest. So we're gonna be losing a lot more work for workers from our population and we're gaining less kids in the schools. So you gotta do both. But also what I think is really important where Michigan can lead is looking at the disconnect between the skills of our workforce and the demands of our employers. So take for instance, say someone who was laid off who worked at JCPenney's. Now to transition that person to working in an Amazon distribution center is a very different skill set that individuals are gonna need. So if Michigan can own the transition for someone who has the skills, but doesn't have the training and the education and offering that free or at a very low cost so they can quickly get into those next technology jobs, that's where I think we can really be a leader. Well, and, and the three of us are the three representatives or economic development leaders for Michigan. There's 15. So if there are any other hearings or any other items that we can weigh in on, I speak on behalf of all of our members, we would love to be a resource to you um, and be at the table to provide insight in the future. So thank you.